Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, I am Ethan. And I am Brian. And welcome to our Loki Season 1, Episode 4 podcast. Before we begin, we'd like to ask you to subscribe to our channel so you can keep up to date with all of our Loki Season 1 Review and Synopsis podcasts. And make sure that you watch Loki on Disney Plus, streaming every Wednesday. Uh... Yeah, and also make sure that, uh, please watch the videos, no, please watch the episodes before you come to watch today's videos, because we are going to discuss some spoiler-heavy content, especially in this one again. They're really, they're really doing it, guys. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, they're, they're really, like, spoiling, like, the big-time spoilers are in this episode once again. So please, please, please do not spoil yourself. And go watch it for yourself. Anything yes. else to add, Brian? Uh, no. Just the fact that anyone who doesn't watch the episodes is a heathen. All right. So, are you ready to get into this episode synopsis? Oh yeah. All righty. Then let us begin Loki season one episode four, titled "The Nexus Event." We we begin where else but Asgard. And we get this nice sweeping shot over like these mountains and stuff. See it from a completely different angle, and that's from the back instead of the front. Wait a minute. I thought Asgard was destroyed. What are we doing here? Well, immediately after, we see a young Sylvie. Oh. And we see her um, playing with... You know, some 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 toys. We see um, a, a Valkyrie and a dragon. Um, and uh, we also see... Fen um, so the wolf is supposed to represent Fenris Wolf. Um, the giant wolf that um, Hulk fought. Oh, okay. Um, and then uh, like a, a Nordic Viking ship. Um, also, the, uh, her playing, uh, her saying the Valkyrie flies over, defeats the dragon. Um, that is a reference to when the Valkyries were fighting in Thor Ragnarok. Remember that? The beginning of it? Yes. Or, not remember. the beginning, but when Thor was telling the history of the Valkyries? Yes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we see young Sylvie, who's just playing with the toys, not knowing anything, right? And then out of nowhere, Ravona. Um, at this point, who is a hunter, um, her and two other Minutemen just come through a time portal and are like, hey, you're arrested, you child. You're under arrest for committing existence or something. They, Basically. They explicitly do not elaborate in this episode why they arrested mm -hmm. Sylvie as a child. They deliberately did that for reasons we do not know yet. I, I think we're probably going to get into that next episode. <laughs> Gotcha. Because, I mean, I'm sure they're going to elaborate it on some point. Right. Uh, we just don't know when. But yeah, um, Sylvie apparently committed crimes against the Time Variance Authority. Uh, they arrest Sylvie and they reset her timeline, basically destroying everything. And she is brought to the Time Variance Authority um, and we see it how it was before Loki got there. We see a different um, person at the desk. Um, we see um, a woman. And uh, the so uh, we also see, or well, Sylvie sees a man who gets manhandled here at the TVA. Uh, one of the first things she sees. And uh, if that man looked familiar at all, that's because uh, remember last episode, the man with the giant mustache, who was who is the, the the guy who yelled out the sacred timeline just got bombed, or someone just bombed the sacred timeline? Yeah. Oh, that guy. That's, oh, yeah. really? I this didn't. This guy that got handled is him. I didn't even notice that. Yep. Wow. And the reason why, I will get back to later. Okay. Wait, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna say it now. Because, I mean, this episode explicitly tells us. I mean, um, yeah, we kind of figured it out already from the previous episode. Yeah. Um, but la So last episode, um, Sylvie dropped the bomb that everyone at the TVA is a variant. And so this opening scene, if you pay really close attention to it or just look at the cast list um, <laughs> in the credits, uh, you will notice that that is, in fact, the same guy enforcing the fact 
uh, here in the first couple of minutes that everyone at the TVA is a variant. Uh, she tries to get them to help him. No one does. And then she goes through the same pro- process that Loki had to go through back in episode one. The artificial um, destroying machine, the sign, what you said, build the room. <laughs> And then eventually she goes to a courtroom where she where she does escape. She escapes Ravona's grasp by biting her and kicking her, steals her temp pad and gets the fuck out of there. <laughs> I wrote down in my notes, Sylvie getting away is Ravona's fall, LMAO. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, and then after, as soon as uh, Sylvia goes to the time, uh, to, through the time portal, we then cut to Ravona in present day, um, in her now judge uniform, uh, showing that they do actually have positions that they can work up to. Cause I mean, you know, it is an actual business. Yeah. You go from criminal to office worker. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on here. Um, and yeah, we see her in an elevator that eventually opens and we see her walk into this giant smoky room where we see the silhouettes of the timekeepers. Holy God. I'm just like, ooh, they're going to show us the timekeepers? And then it was just the silhouettes and I'm like, dang it. <laughs> you're like you're you're like so ready to see Kang the Conqueror, weren't you? Cuz that's what right? I could no, imagine. Okay, honestly, legit. <laughs> I'm actually going to get into that later on, don't worry. Mhm. 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 Yeah, then title card. Woo. So then after all that, after the title card and everything, we then cut to Mobius, who is uh waiting for Ravona outside the elevator. And Ravona and Mobius start to talk. Uh, Ravona just saying stuff about how it's jarring to stand in front of the timekeepers. It's just scary. What do you mean? The timekeepers, when they were in silhouette form, did look kind of intimidating, especially since we don't know the extent of their powers. Yeah, exactly, because they're, they're meant to be this whole big ancient, uh, om- mm-hmm. omniscient, rather, uh, presence. They, they, okay, we, we at least know two of their powers. One, they can put every multiverse into one giant timeline. And two, they can make Infinity Stones powerless. Yeah. So, that's, 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 some, <laughs> that's some hefty lifting right there. We then start hearing about how the variant was right, and then, you know, just stuff that's already been enforced. Um, that they're now talking about from their perspective. Um, but then eventually Mobius is like, Hey, do you have any, uh, do you have any, uh, updates on uh, C20? And Ravona's all like, yeah, no, she's dead. Yeah. Which just is say like that, but that's, that's literally like what, like she's just he, like, he's just like, what about Hunter C20? And she's like, that's impossible. She's dead. Basically, and he's like, wait, what? <laughs> ba- basically, basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, which is odd, considering uh, we only got to see her for a little bit. But uh, I guess they did. Like they never did clarify. They left that sentence very vague, especially when Ravona said to Mobius to keep the deaths on the very low, to keep the news of the death on the low. So mm-hmm. it it was left very vague for the audience to really know if C twenty is actually dead or not dead perhaps in a stasis somehow or dead. And I was, I, I was with Mobius this entire time. Like I, I, I believed Ravona up until the very end. Mm. Um, I had my doubts, but anyways, so yeah, Mobius, the reason why Mobius wants to talk to C20 is because she, uh, he wants to be able to talk to her and see what she meant by it's real, like it's all real, everything like that. That's right. You know, her, her last words. Um, and Ravona says that the reason why they had to prune her uh, was because uh, by the time she got to the TVA, uh, she, her brain was just scrambled and she couldn't even form sentences, which we see later on. Mm. Liar! <laughs> Liar! 
Uh, yeah, no, Ravona. If you liked Ravona in the previous episode, you're gonna hate her after this one. Uh huh. Uh, uh just I, gonna say that right now. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm just saying that right now. I kind of had my feelings from her uh, in a previous episode. I kind of had my doubts about her, but uh. We'll just... Not really that I had my doubts about her. I was just kind of like, oh, okay, she's going to be like the, the, the hard ass that Mobius has to work with. Well, for me, and... it, it, for me, it was the previous episode where Sylvie had revealed the truth bomb, which was all the, uh, all the office workers there were variants from all the places of time. And so I just kind of had a feeling, and like, and Loki also said that um, they don't even know that they are variants. So I was like, that kind of left me guessing. Maybe someone higher up actually does know something about that. Like maybe someone like Ravona, especially since she yeah. is, uh, she's kind of in league with the timekeepers more often than any other quote variant there. So she probably knows mm -hmm. something that everybody else there does not. So. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, who knows? Um, we do. <laughs> anyways, so yeah, um, they start talking about how her C20's brain was scrambled, conform sentences, which we see later on, lies. Um, and so that's, that's Ravona's whole BS reason why they had to kill off Hunter C20. And so, as you already stated, Ravona asks him to keep quiet about this, not tell anybody about it, uh, which he does. Um, and so, yeah, that's basically the gist of their conversation. That's the important parts of their conversation. That, that's that's the, the main plot devices. So after that whole conversation, we then cut back to the Lamentous One being destroyed with Loki and Sylvie sitting down on some rocks. Loki apologizing, things like that, because he knows that he fucked up. Sorry, yeah. screwed up. No, no, that's okay. They say shit in this show. <laughs> it was only WandaVision. So he understands that he, fu that he fucked up, and he tries to apologize to Sylvie. Sylvie is like, uh, so Sylvie says, like, hey. Sylvie actually said something that I really like, hmm. and that's um, the, the universe can't be controlled so it manifests chaos hmm i really like that um because i mean it really showcases the whole like the the, the sacred timeline in, in terms of the whole universe the sacred timeline is basically a prison for the universe because the universe wants to be able to branch out and be um, multiples of each other because that's what it originally was. But the timekeepers were like, no, no, no. Sacred timeline. And so that screwed everything up and that's why variants exist because the universe creates them so that it can manifest that chaos mm. back. Um, and I wrote it like that. It also reinforces what Ravona, something that Ravona said in the previous scene um, of Ravona saying, do you know how impossible it is to keep the sacred timeline intact well like you know, one, of, one of the weird things that I uh, I thought it was um, you, you remember how the end of episode 2 like the whole timeline is spilling into different sections right yeah whatever happened to that they kind of just forgot about that they, they kind of do just gloss over that I mean the amount of Minutemen that they send out that they sent out the Minutemen could have possibly been able to stop all of them Perhaps, but I didn't like the fact that it was done off screen because I, seeing as that was like a major plot point of the show, yeah, they just especially decided. Since they, like, they, they, especially since like some of the places that got bombed were very important, like plot uh, plot planets that are important to the MCU. <laughs> Yeah, so like I, 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 or Titan, things like that. Yeah, Las Vegas. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> China. Ch oh, 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 <laughs> no. But like that, I, I just found that to be very disappointing if they had really dealt with all that off screen. Because the next time we do get to see the monitor of the timeline, it's just fixed again with that one uh, nexus point that we'll get to in this very scene. But it's just mm -hmm. fixed all of a sudden, which is weird. Yeah. 
No, I didn't really like that either. Not yeah, gonna no. Lie. Um, because because yeah. I thought I thought seeing as this show is slated for a second season, I still think that's a thing. My source for it kind of just shadow um, deleted it off of its uh, thing. So I'm actually not sure now, but I'm just going to say for the sake of argument, I figure for the um, a second season, see, let's just say at the end of this season, uh, Loki and Sylvie <laughs> <laughs> and they get together and then uh, it's up. It's now their duty to fix all of the uh, stuff, the the nexus points in the sacred timeline, and all that. Yeah, who knows? Uh, that could have been an interesting show, but um, I, I don't know. I don't know anymore. And I just didn't like that they did that. Part of me that. thinks that the uh, the ending of the show might be them destroying the sacred timeline and turning it back into the multiverse. Perhaps, Doctor um, Strip. <laughs> well, yeah, no, because I mean, like, sure, no one really said that this show was going to tie into any movies, but because it has to do with both time and alternate universes, it could potentially uh, build up the villain of Kang, which I will get into later. Um, well, you say or, you say that the the like the show doesn't explicitly tie in with the movie, but because of its existence, it. All re- it obligatorily involves itself with the rest of the movies because it's part of a whole connected universe. Yeah, yeah, that's yes, but <laughs> what I meant is it it um, it shows it so far it doesn't really connect to any future on movies. Like I mean, WandaVision is supposed to lead into Multiverse of Madness, and Falcon and Winter Soldier is supposed to lead into Captain America Four, but. As far as we know, Loki isn't supposed to tie in directly into a future movie. Okay. That's what I meant. Okay. Okay. Because I... I <laughs> okay, and thank yeah, you. Yes, so I know that it's part of a connected universe. I, I, I know you just sounded very dumb, Brian. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so let's get into this, uh, into this Nexus event, shall we? What okay. exactly is this Nexus event? Well, Ethan, would you like to do the honors? I meant it as a joke. <laughs> I yes. only meant well, it not as a joke. Fuck each other. Um, Loki does fall for Sylvie. I meant it as a joke. And apparently, <sighs> Loki falling for himself is enough to instantly cause a Nexus event. Oh, because as we see in the next part, in the next scene, when um, when we see the sacred timeline start to branch off, we see that it goes at like usually like in the past episodes when we've seen something branch off, we've seen it like slowly start to increase like uh, incline. In this, it's just a fucking like a fucking zero to one hundred real quick moment, you know? Cool. Like, also- it, is, it is a steep breach, and so this branch just goes from the sacred timeline all the way up. Uh, they even make a little bit of jo- um, joke about it because they're so they're because of how unstable it is right now. After they fixed everything off screen, um, they they are they're trying to like make sure that nothing else happens, um, and they keep on referencing like what if someone just steps on the wrong leaf? So when the branch happens, Mobius is like, "That's not someone stepping on a leaf." <laughs> 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 and I'm just like, you're right. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's a well, like it's a climax. <laughs> In more ways than one. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> um, but yeah. So Loki falls for Sylvie, and that creates a big enough breach for them to be found by the TVA, and it does eventually cause a Nexus event. Because we don't actually see them stop. Because in order to stop it, they would have to basically delete either one or both of them in order for the breach to fully stop. But they don't do that. So I'm sure, because of the name of the episode, I'm sure that it caused a nexus point. And I think that this is what will create the multiverse. 
Then there Loki is... falling. Who would have who would have thought that Loki falling for himself would create the multiverse in the MCU? Hold, hold on, didn't they reset the scene after they arrested the two? Wait, they might have. Hold on. Yeah, don't <laughs> stop talking. <laughs> they probably did. In all honesty. Well, even then, I mean, the planet does get destroyed, so we see it get really close to the red. And then they cut right before it can t- go into the red. Yeah, no, it doesn't show them it reset the timeline or anything. It oh, just, really? It just cuts, it, yeah, it just cuts from them being on Lamentis to them being manhandled in the TVA. What? Uh, okay, yeah. so now so I'm confused. Hold, hold on. Isn't this technically kind of violating the their own rules because the whole thing happening on lamentus is an apocalypse event and lucky showed us on pompeii that you can do whatever you want without it infecting anything on the timeline right or am i wrong about that uh you are right i think the reason why this is different is because loki falling for himself was because it's a variant falling for another variant. It's not like a sacred timeline person is falling in love with a variant. This is variant and variant love right here. And I think that's strong enough to break anything. Okay. Is what it seems like it's going with. Because, uh, it, it, and the reason why I think that is because of how steep the breach was. Because again, the breach goes like straight from the sacred, pretty much like instantly from the sacred timeline to the red in like three seconds. Like it happens very quickly. And so I think that's why they were able to find them. And then because the only way to really like, you you can't really stop them from being in love because it's an emotion. It's not like a physical thing that you can stop unless you get rid, unless you like prune one of them, which they don't prune any of them. So my whole family tree is just a circle. (laughs) (laughs) So unless in the next episode or even in the season finale, they show us that, Hey, this didn't cause a nexus event. The sacred timeline still intact. Then if that doesn't happen, Loki falling in love with himself created the multiverse in the MCU. Oh boy. (laughs) Tell proven wrong. That is what the show is going with. Alrighty then. As of right now. Let's go with that then. (laughs) So. I hate comic books. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so after, so they then are brought back to the TVA and we see Loki and Mobius have a, have a good old friendly chat after Loki betrayed Mobius last, uh, two episodes ago. And so, uh, Loki, after trying to plead, hey, let me go, uh, Mobius is like, nah, you're just not, you're, you're just a bad friend. And um, so uh, what happens is uh, Loki gets thrown into a, oh, what do they, don't they, they, it's basically like a time prison of sorts where he is stuck in a time loop. Cool. So yeah, Loki is uh, put into this like time prison of sorts. Right, but before uh, cell. but before that, before Loki had got thrown in there, uh Mobius asks Loki a que- like is like he basically says him to the degree of uh go ahead, let me hear la- like one last Loki quip before you go away forever. And instead of Loki saying a quip, Loki, when, like, the TVA is lying to you. Like, in real, like, from, Loki is telling the truth here, but seeing as Mobius has no idea what he's talking about, he he just... Mobius has every reason not to trust Loki right now. Right, (laughs) exactly. And seeing this, like, that is the most radical quip you could have possibly ever said, buddy. So I'm um, bye bye. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so he's thrown into this time cell um, where basically what it is, is it's used as a interrogation tactic where they make the person relive a, a time loop uh, to whittle them down, which it doesn't fully work on Loki, but it gets there. <laughs> <laughs> right. They put him in the most weirdest time loop ever. It's kind of hilarious. Yep. 
Um, this was so. Um, I before I watched the episode, I, I went on Instagram and um, I and one of the posts that I saw that was on my page was um, spoilers for Loki episode four with no context. And I'd like, I like, I was able to see the image, but I scrolled past it immediately after because I didn't want spoilers. Uh oh. Uh, but one of the Im- one of the images was of Sif. Huh. Um. So yeah, Sif comes back. Uh, for this scene, and it's um, it's after uh, Lo- she find uh, finds out that past Loki um, pulled a prank on her by cutting off part of her hair, um, smacks him, uh, nut nut kicks him, uh, and punches him a third time. Okay, I have one thing to say about this scene. <laughs> yes, or about this time loop. The first slap. And the nut punch look really good, but that final punch doesn't look realistic. Yeah. I mean, me coming from like a stage background, I, I've had to learn like stage fighting for multiple shows that I've been in, uh, whether it be sword fighting or fist fighting or things like that. We've had to learn it because it's part of stage, it's stage combat. And I can tell a fake punch when I see one, and let me tell you that 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 last like that third punch right after the nut the nut kick that Sif does does not look realistic to me. <laughs> okay, like I can clearly tell that she's not hitting him, <laughs> or not even trying. Like it look like it legit looks like she goes right in front of his face. <laughs> like it doesn't even look like she makes contact. And I don't know if it's because it looks like he reacts too late or if it's just the angle at which she tried to punch him, but it just doesn't look realistic to me. And I don't know if that was intentional or not, because I don't, I don't think it would have been. That might be at fault of the camera angle that it's placed in as well. Probably. Yeah, I would have to go look it up myself just to see what you're talking about. But uh, I can't mm-hmm. do that right now. But yeah, he's put into this time loop. And he does not like it because he cannot have the satisfaction of what he did afterwards, which was drink wine and have fun. <laughs> uh, he also tries to um, talk to the uh, to the time loop, which I mean, it kind of works. Right. For, and like for those who don't know what a time loop is, a time loop is basically something that happens over and over and over again without anything ever changing. Is basically yeah. what the movie Groundhog Day is. And so this time loop is just, you know, Lady Sif doing the punch kick, bad stage, <laughs> bad stage fight <laughs> punch over and over and over again. Just, yep. just like that. And so Loki doesn't get hit once, but twice. Not, thri- not thrice, but a lot of times. <laughs> yep. In less than a minute. And, uh, yeah, so he is now just stuck in that time loop. Um, we then cut to, uh, Mobius and Ravona in Ravona's office as, uh, he tries to get permission to interrogate Sylvie, the other variant. Um, right, well, and- like, the, like this right here, <clears throat> what Ravona and Mobius are in her office for is basically just like a case closed celebration type of thing. It's like, the day is over, we got Loki, we got Sylvie, everything's fantastic, let's have a drink to that, shall we? But Ravona yes. is like, all happy, cheery, we got the job done, then Mobius is trying to force himself to be like that. He's not really there because of, of his uncertainty with the whole case. Yes. Well, his uncertainty with the case, and also, um, even though it didn't look, it, like, when Loki told him the TVA is lying for, lying to you, for a split second, you can see Mobius think about it. Hmm. Um, because, he, I mean, he already has his doubts about whether or not C-20 is already alive. Um, or if she's actually alive or not. Um, and so, he, he, the reason why he's not as cheerful is just the fact that he's uncertain. He let Loki's words sit with him uh which we see was actually a good thing not a bad thing this time uh um also i could be wrong about the whole nexus thing because ravona does say 
just stick with your Loki and figure out what that Nexus spike was. They don't explicitly say like event or point. They just say Nexus spike. So there is a chance that the sacred timeline could still be intact. Perhaps. I mean, but what, until what, they show what, us. Yeah. But what else would this episode be titled the Nexus event after? Exactly. For that. Um, yeah. Cause I mean, they do mention, well, the Nexus event could also be referencing what Sylvie's Nexus event was that we don't actually learn about. <laughs> oh, perhaps. Yeah. Um, because Sylvie's was, I mean, because all Loki did was just steal a cube. Sylvie, for all we know, she just existed and the timeline got screwed up. <laughs> um, so until they actually show us the sacred timeline intact, I'm going to go with um, Loki falling in love with Loki caused the multiverse, but it's still up in the air. Um, and so, yeah, this entire scene is really just, uh, or at least the majority of the scene is just Mobius trying to get permission to go talk with the other Loki, uh, which Ravona just does not let him do. And so Mobius then, uh, leaves the room, uh, and then we cut to Mobius in, uh, B-15. And so we all, uh, we see outside of Sylvie's time theater um a whole line of guards then, yeah and a whole line of guards who are um beat and broken <laughs> and Logan, i love i love this line by mobius um he's just like you know we've brought in kree titans <laughs> like uh strong beings why is it that two orphan demigods are such a pain in the ass <laughs> <laughs> Um, which they're not demigods. They are technically gods. In order for them to be demigods, one of their parents had to have been human, but their parents were gods. I'm just going to say that right now. Uh oh, it is Mobius. <laughs> uh oh, the timeline. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. They're in the TVA. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, but yeah, and then, uh, so before Mobius can leave, uh, B-15 asks him if, uh, if Loki, uh, said anything, um, like, worth mentioning, and, uh, Mobius is like, yeah, <laughs> he said the TVA is lying to me. Uh, and then B-15 really takes that personally. Yeah. And I took that personally. <laughs> and I took that personally. <laughs> <laughs> um... They then split their ways. B-15 goes back to the uh, line of guards and Mobius goes back to uh, Loki's time theater. We then see Loki back in the time loop uh, with the same line being said and Loki is literally just begging to sip at this point. No more. I get it. I'm a, her I'm a horrible person. Just don't kick me in the balls again. So, stop busting my balls. I need them for one last time, please. <laughs> There's this wonderful girl I met. She's me. <laughs> um, but yeah, and he goes on this monologue about how he he basically comes to a self reflection um, about how he's a narcissist and everything he does is because he wants attention. Uh, which I mean, it's a, it's a it, uh, Tom Hiddleston does a really good. I mean, you know what? I I don't think we've ever really mentioned it, but Tom Hiddleston is just a great actor for Loki. Oh yes, definitely. Like there are some <laughs> actors that were just born to play certain roles, and Tom Hiddleston's Loki definitely fits into that category. Yeah, the fact that he tried to audition for Thor. Bruh, Tom Hiddleston is Thor. No, 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 no. <laughs> Could you imagine it in the, the TVA alternate universe where uh, Tom Hiddleston is Loki and Chris Hemsworth, or Tom Hiddleston is Thor and Chris Hemsworth Loki? Oh. <laughs> okay, then, then now it would be called Loki, Loki the Dark World, Loki Ragnarok, <laughs> Loki Dagger and Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> then this then now, now we get Thor the TV show Sif does eventually help him up um, after his monologue but she decides not to nut punch him and uh, not kick him this time she just leaves and then when the time loop would normally reset it doesn't because Mobius decides to walk his happy little ass in um, and Mobius 
uh, then starts to interrogate Loki back in the time theater. Yeah, for the, this uh, interrogation right here, I have more notes on this than probably anything else. So, <laughs> um, both Loki and Mobius try to do some uh, bluffing tactics to f um, figure out something. I guess I guess the two of them, their objectives right now is trying to figure out <laughs> <laughs> the other person's objective is actually which is kind of yeah funny. <laughs> yeah so like mobius's objective is like trying to figure out what is loki's game plan here and loki's like what is mobius's game plan with me so they tried doing some bluffing attack it's like loki bluffs about like he has a partnership with sylvie it's like they they had been uh conspiring together from the very beginning type of thing <laughs> and then I think it's later that Mobius finds out that's bullcrap. I don't know about that. Yeah, uh, well, um, so basically Loki's like, oh, no, I was the, um, I was the uh, master behind, behind all of it. Sylvie was just a pawn. Um, how it changes is, uh, Mo how Mobius finds out that he's lying is Mobius is like, oh, yeah, no, we pruned her. Right, we, we got rid of her, right. and then uh, Loki. Like Loki, he says he's fine with it because he's trying to keep up the uh, the illusion. But you can look uh, just by looking in his eyes and in his face. Um, even Mobius is like, <laughs> "You love her." <laughs> yeah, the, this is yeah. In this interrogation, like that that segment right there is where we finally learned the um whole thing where i was saying it was a joke it was a joke okay, so we'll gonna <laughs> but, but uh apparently apparently it's not that's how we go like we get the whole thing of like loki is so narcissistic and about himself that now that he's found some someone that is himself just on the external uh he loves her <laughs> because she is himself i know that was a very complicated sentence <laughs> a human said the yeah. sentence. <laughs> He's so narcissistic that the only person he could fall in love with is himself. Right. An alternate version of himself, but himself nonetheless. Well, of course I know him. He's me. Oh yeah, I did I did write down the Nexus event was caused by the two incestuous beings. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay. I mean, it would technically be incest because while they are alternate versions of each other, they still have the same blood because they are both Laufey son and Laufey daughter. Right. So because they come from the same bloodline, it would technically be incestuous. I think that's how it works. I guess we do not have a word for such a thing as this. <laughs> Help! Yeah. It was a joke, yeah. Marvel. Why did you have to do this? <laughs> um, but yeah, Mobius like Mobius just casually brings up, oh yeah, no, we pruned her, and Loki's like, oh yeah, no, I'm fine with that. But in his eyes, he's like tearing up and stuff. Right, and then Mobius he's like, dang it, I didn't get the, I didn't get to penetrate her <laughs> with oh. my dagger. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dagger! But the, wait, I thought love was an illusion. But it's, it's a also a oh, because it's a it penetrates dagger. you. Oh, <laughs> is that is that really why they made it a dagger? Oh, oh no, I don't know. Who knows why they made it a dagger? I hate. We're not getting into that right now. The past is in the past. I hate comic books. Mobius is like you love her. Um, that's how he realizes like what's br like what broke reality is the fact that. An incredible narcissist fell in love with himself. Yada yada yada. Right, and then uh, somewhere this is when, uh, Mobius finally learns her name is Sylvie. Yeah. Um, S well, like somewhere along the lines in this interrogation, I don't remember what brought it up, but Lucky does drop the truth bomb that everyone working at the TVA is a variant. Yeah. Um, he goes on this like huge rant ba a rant basically and he's like look you and everyone else who works here were not created by the time keepers you were stolen from your time you for all you know you could have had a family you could have been happy like anything could have happened like you could have had the perfect life and you wouldn't even know it because the timekeeper stole you 
That's the uh, that's basically what this uh, interrogation was for. Just trying to get some extra information out of Loki. Right, and then on the flip side of this, on the alter ego, because Loki and Mobius are their own thing. On the other side of the the hall, or like not the hall, but on the other side of the building, is the uh, is um, Sylvie and B fifteen. Was basically trying to do the same thing, but then B fifteen does. Something a little different, might you say? Yeah. Um, well, so B fifteen. Uh, when we cut to her, we first see her in the hallway, and we see her look at the poster that says, "Did you get them all?" Um, verify through deletion. Um, obviously, a, like a motivation esque poster for um, Minutemen and stuff, basically being like, "Hey, make sure that you delete um, any variants." <laughs> That's also how I do my tests. If the answer doesn't, <laughs> if the answer doesn't work with the question, I delete it. <laughs> it is. I just erase the question. <laughs> um, and so yeah, B fifteen then lights up her uh, deletion stick and uh, asks the two minute men outside the door to let her in. Obviously, looking like she's about to go prune the variant, or at least talk to her in a very. Um, a very bad way. <laughs> couldn't bad. find the word, so bad yeah, is what I can Yeah, I couldn't with. find a word. I had a bad cop, basically. Yeah. Uh, she looks like she's about to go bad cop on Sylvie. Um, so they let her in, and then she gets in. Um, and um, after Sylvie says a quip to let her to, in, to introduce her to the room, um, B-15 puts down her stick and uh, instead of interrogating Sylvie at all, instead what she does is uh, take Sylvie back to Re- uh, to uh, Rex uh, Rock's cart. Sorry, Rock's cart. Um, in the rain, so that she can ask her to uh, put her back and look back in her memories. Their their whole spiel, their whole thing is that. Um, Sylvie puts her back into that memory-esque state, um, and B-15 sees that she was happy um, and sees that she had um, a family, like people that she cared about, people that cared about her, um, and she had this pretty decent life all before coming to the TVA or well being kidnapped to the TVA. Um, And so B-15 basically uh, helps her. Yeah. Yeah. That comes into play later on in the episode. But that that's all we really get from uh, Sylvie and B-15's interaction for now. It does play on later in the episode. So on to Ravonia and Mobius. So this is, this is more the end of case celebration that you were talking about. Um, where uh, they, they're, they're in a more casual setting. I mean, Ravonia doesn't have her tie on or anything. Um, oh no! They're, they're gonna fuck. <laughs> oh, <I mean>, <laughs> <laughs> finally! I, I, We're getting all of it today, boy. I th- I thought that was earlier though. No, or, or was um, it? Was it here? Yeah. Really? Okay. Huh? What was um, the thing before then? The thing before then was just Mobius asking for permission to inter- interrogate Sylvie. Oh, I'm dumb. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we are at the halfway point, boys. Don't worry. <laughs> Ravona and uh, Mobius have the end of case celebration. Ravona signs like these documents basically saying, hey, case is closed. Um, Mobius looks at them, signs them. Uh, and they have a couple drinks and stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah, it's basically just like, uh, hey, end of case. Um, Ravona can tell that Mobius is a little bit off, um, but... Uh, Mobius just brushes him off, brushes it off, and says, "Oh, uh, I'm just exhausted from dealing with two Lokis. Um, it's very exhausting, stuff like that." Ravona, during their conversation early on in the scene, uh, Ravona asks Mobius, "If you could go anywhere, anytime, where would it be?" And Mobius, right now, gives her a very BS answer and is like, "Right here, right now, with you." And Ravona's like, no, seriously. And Mobius is like, I can do that already. <laughs> he doesn't necessarily give her the answer, an answer that she was looking for. The en- at the, the end of this conversation, Mobius is able to get Ravona distracted 
um, so that she's looking away from him, and uh, he switches out their ten pads, um, so that he, as we later see, in the, as we see in like the next scene, so that he can uh, look up the status on C twenty. That is his objective to find out how much Loki is actually lying. Mobius leaves, um, says thanks for the drink, and uh, goes on his merry little way. This is when we get the B-15 scene um, with Sylvie that we've already talked about, so I'm just going to skip past this. Yeah, then we see Mobius inside of the TVA library. Yep. Uh, look, looking through the fi- um, going into the files, going away from where anyone would really be able to see him, and he pulls out uh, Ravona's temp pad and he looks up C20's status. Now, at first, he sees that her status is in fact deceased, um, reinforcing the idea that hey, maybe the TVA isn't lying to me because I mean, it looks like she's telling the truth because I mean, she she said deceased, she is deceased, but then. He looks up a uh, interrogation video. Right. And remember earlier when Ravona said they had pruned her because of, quote, uh, she, her head was scrambled. She couldn't say complete sentences and all that jazz. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can you can just tell the absolute fluency in her speaking right here? <laughs> right? No. Like... We, she she start if anything uh, like Rona, Ravona was basically just saying the exact opposite of what we saw uh-huh. um, where she started out speaking in um like scrambled brain talk of like it's re- like saying the same thing over and over again but by this point by the time she got to the TVA she was able to make fluent sentences um and she keeps on saying. Um, that this was real, this wasn't an illusion, it wasn't anything like that, it was a memory, um, I had a life, de- um, like, before the TVA, um, and the sacred timeline, and everything like that, um, and she's like, I'm a variant, and so is everyone in this place, uh, and then we see Ravona say, I'm ending this, so Ravona is the whole reason C20 is dead, I knew that Ravona had to have some sort of top secret knowledge that the other yeah. variants there working there did not have. After Mobius does some intense questioning of Loki, like asking whether or not he truly loves Sylvie, um, asking, do you think you deserve to be alone? Things like that. They eventually come out. And then we see Ravona with some Minutemen. So Mobius just he, when he's asking the questions towards Loki, they're at, he's asking them in the time cell, in the time, time loop, loop place. And Mobius is like, "Oh hey, Ravona, how you doing? <laughs> Listen, uh, about the whole ten pad situation. Yeah, no, I just I I, I noticed after um w- after I had left that I picked up yours. I'm sorry, my fault. My <laughs> bad. They were ready for uh, him, you know." And, uh, yeah, so then he's like, yeah, no, here you go. Um, there's that back. Um, ask what's going on. You know, things that he would be asking, like, why, why are these men here? Um, and then he puts it together while she's there and that he can't talk his way out of this. And he, he decides to answer the Ravona's question of where he would go. And he's like, wherever it is I'm really from. You know, before the TVA, I mean, maybe I had a jet ski. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, you get it, Mobius. You go get that yeah. jet ski. <laughs> he, he was also a, a super fashion model. He was also a talking race car. Uh, he was also a little little guy in a museum, like a little plastic <laughs> figurine in a museum. He was a lot of different things. He was a wedding crasher with his friend Vince Vaughn. <laughs> oh no, you gave it away. You gave it away. You said uh, the te- you said the title of the name. You said the title of the movie. Oh uh, no! You've given it away. I can't remember his character's name. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, they then prune Mobius, which I'm gonna tell you right now. I was so like into Mobius's comedy bit there of like him like answering Ravona's question in the most comedic way that I didn't even fully like 
uh, process the fact that he just got pruned in front of me. Bruh, you do... You do not know my reaction in this episode. So, right here was the first one where... I don't know if you've ever seen me shocked in person, but whenever I... I rarely get shocked, and it happened twice in this episode. My face just kind of like, it go. My eyes widen, and then my jaw drops, and then my jaw locks. Like my muscles actually hurt, and I can't actually close it, and until wow. like until like uh, a little bit later, and that happened twice. And right here it was when Mobius got pruned. I, I, I was I was shocked. <laughs> Like mm -hmm. my, my eyes fixed on the screen. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I didn't want Mobius to die because I, right? I really liked Mobius. He was probably the funniest character in the show besides Loki himself. And then my jaw, my jaw dropped and I couldn't close it <laughs> for a bit. Yeah, no, I mean, like, at, like after it happened, I, like, at, like after um, I was done laughing, because of his jokes, I then was able to process it, and I'm just like, they didn't just kill off Mobius. Like, like I just, like, I just, I was like, in denial. <laughs> like, oh man, Twitter at that moment, I had to have been blowing up. <laughs> it's like, oh, definitely. Mo Mobius like, even before died. the episode end ended, everyone just saw that and was like, no, Mobius is dead. Oh, that's so, so heartbreaking. And even, like, I mean, I know that, like, Ravona is do, like she is trying to like make sure no one knows that like their variants and stuff like that because that's the timekeeper's will but even she feels bad for doing it like she can't even look and i'm just like oh i mean i'm pretty it's like you said they probably had some sexual tension between the two of them <laughs> yeah no like it, it's it's very clear like the way that they just interact with each other it like you you just get this feeling that they had to have been in a relationship at some point. Um, Loki is then taken away. Um, we'll see where he is in a little bit. Don't worry. Uh, first, Ravona has to go get Sylvie. Um, she sees Sylvie is still wet from when they went to... Um... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> God damn it. You said wet. <laughs> um... <laughs> um... <sighs> And uh, so, yeah, Ravona comes and gets uh, Sylvie, sees that she's wet from the rain on um, at Rock's cart, um, and asks who is with her, B-15. And they're like, get people searching for B-15 and bring her to me. Yada, yada, yada. So then we see where uh, Loki was taken as um, Sylvie and Ravona come, um, come by. Uh, and they are going to go up the elevator to see the timekeepers. Uh, Ravona takes them up alone, um, and Sylvie asks while in the elevator uh, to Ravona, do you remember me? And Ravona, and Ravona talks down to her like she's not even a person. Like, she's just straight up like, what do you want variant? Like, and I'm just like, your boy toy was a variant. Don't you dare talk down to them. I mean, she herself You're is one, too. Yeah, like, shut exactly. up, okay? <laughs> um, so... And she knows Yeah. yeah. Um, and so Ravona, uh, Ravona says that she doesn't even re remember um, why Sylvie was brought in. Yeah, right, right there is the show deliberately um, avoiding the question as to why exactly Sylvie was brought in as a child. And the, she she even smiled like she kind of smiles when saying I don't remember like she's proud that she doesn't remember. And I'm just like, oh, Ravona, you're making it really easy to hate you right now. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, they're taken up to the timekeepers um, as we see the misty room, which, OK, I'm just going to say this right now. The timekeepers like domain is probably my favorite set piece so far. Yeah. Like it's it's very mystical, um, with the mist adding to it. <laughs> yeah, it's the mist uh, and the blue aura as well. Yeah, um, and I do like that they keep him in so. Like, I mean, uh, like in this scene, they take him out of the silhouette form, um, but like the whole like essence just around the timekeepers is very interesting. The runes that are around, 
the way that um like, have you ever seen the movie labyrinth no never heard of it okay well it's this old movie from like the 80s i want to say um it had david bowie in it um and um the the like climax of the film uh has the uh has the two main characters I'm not gonna get too far into the plot right now but um it has um them going like in this trippy like illusion of stairs that are going against physics like they're climbing downstairs but they're coming like from the roof so they're upside down or like they're on the sides and stuff and that's what this room very much reminded me of like especially in the background because if you like uh because in in the background um like as uh we see like more of the uh domain of the timekeepers we see like stairwells and stuff that go on the sides and go up and down from the roof and things like that yeah um and so i just really like that um we also see that um up here by the timekeepers there are different minutemen um in more uh so the best way i can describe it is that a minuteman's uniform is more of like like a like a SWAT team's uniform, like reinforced armor. Um, meanwhile, the the Minutemen that protect the timekeepers are more like militant in their look. Right. You know how, how like it's the it's the the regular stormtroopers and stars are white, but then the the ones that guard Emperor Palpatine are the the red the red ones. Yeah. <laughs> are the royal guards that wear red? Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically like that. They meet the timekeepers. Uh, the timekeepers mm -hmm. are basically just like, hey. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. So, and like, remember, the reason why they're all here is for um, a special execution of Loki and Sylvie in front of the timekeepers themselves. And so they basically are just here to get deleted. That's all they're here for. Um, and uh, Sylvie is not happy about that. <laughs> no. <laughs> hmm. hmm. You're trying to kill me? I'm not happy about that. Um, so yeah, Sylvie tries to uh, run towards the timekeepers, but Ravona like is able to because again they're wearing the collars um, that we saw back in episode one. Uh, Ravona is able to time loop her back. She tries again and um, afterwards, and then it doesn't work. And the reason why is because well, a little Miss Hunter B fifteen comes up the elevator and frees Loki and Sylvie. It's uh, uh, B-15 to the rescue. Yep. B-15 hands Sylvia a dagger. Um, B-15 starts fighting some of the uh, militant... Um, royal militant guards. Men. Yeah, the royal guards. Um, and Loki and Sylvia start fighting them off too. Ravona kind of just stays out of it. <laughs> um, she's just back there, staying out of it. Um, which I wonder, I wonder what her direction was. It was probably just like, stand back, stay, stay right here. S stay away, <laughs> stay away until Hiddleston and the actress that plays Sylvie takes care of all the royal guards. And then that's when you step in, Ravona actress, to take care of Sylvie actress. Fight scene and scenes. Yeah, yeah uh, Sylvie and Ramo uh, Ramona fight for a little bit as Tom, as, uh, Loki takes care of two of the militant, um, Royal Guards. Uh, yeah, they are now Royal canonically Guards. known known as Royal Guards. You will accept um, this, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, so did yeah, you just the call timekeepers again? The timekeepers are just sitting, stay, sitting there. They're not even standing. They're just sitting. Um, after they take care of everyone, um, one of the timekeepers says, "We can talk about this." As Sylvie throws a dagger towards him, and then. Um, we see his head just come off. All right. And they all <laughs> hold on. Wait, you? Oh, whoa, whoa, you just can't say a sentence like that without having some big, strong emphasis or oomph or what the fuck to it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yes, so like, did. I want to ask you, Brian, what, how you reacted? Just like before the head got chopped off, just the frame right before where the where like the uh, um. The whatever she threw was like inches away from her head like it was aimed right at the head going towards the head but right before getting it chopped off what was your reaction to it i was just like "Ooh, you're gonna try a dagger against the timekeepers oh really you were like that okay yeah what was your reaction um my reaction was like 
she's gonna miss or something like that. But I just didn't expect how the camera angle uh, focused. I just didn't expect her um, her javelin. I don't know what she threw. Or, like, she threw one of the pruning sticks, didn't she? Yeah. I didn't know that the pruning stick was actually going to aim towards the head. I thought she was going to miss or something. Because these are the goddamn timekeepers. They're not going to die in the fourth episode. But uh, I think that was sort of my reaction to it. But I was absolutely surprised that the pruning stick was actually going towards the head and that the pruning stick hit the head and the timekeeper which is isn't this wasn't the middle one supposed to be rumored as Kang the Conqueror um that's actually what I was gonna get into uh, um, well, um here you go <laughs> yeah okay so we learned that the timekeepers are androids um i saw this meme today before we started recording and it was um it was um it was after they cut off it, uh, the timekeeper's head it's an and uh, they say they're an they're lifeless androids and then they just cut the falcon and winter soldier androids wizards and aliens those are yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and i'm just like wow uh we learned that they are androids now this does not mean that king the conqueror is out of the running um because, I mean, someone had to put the androids there, and if they are androids, if they don't have any power because of, this, uh, because of such, that means that the timekeepers could still be out there somewhere. So, yeah, that's just my little, uh, that's my little theory. I'm just going to say that. I'm not going to get into too much detail. Okay. I, I, I kind of um, figured that's what the direction of a lot of Marvel fans would have gone because, um, yeah. because of this, this whole plot twist that the timekeepers weren't actually real and stuff they're mm -hmm. just robots i figured the direction was gonna go well the timekeepers okay they weren't real here but uh they're off somewhere else doing something <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, like people really want kang and because kang's supposed to like supposedly supposed to be the villain of quantum mania we're all kind of like just show us kang already you know <laughs> and yeah they did and then they didn't <laughs> <laughs> I died, but I lived. <laughs> Did um, you die? Yeah. Unfortunately, yes. But then I lived. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, they find out that they're androids. Um, and I don't remember how they like segue into it, but uh, Loki eventually does try to tell Sylvie. That who uh, he loves her, but he's Try. never able to get no. to it. I I think that was brought up because um, after they had uh discovered this whole plot twist, um, that's when everything just kind of went into shock, and then yeah. Sy Sylvie was left like I guess both Loki and Sylvie were like were left with nothing to do and just like everything that they had ever. Well, everything that was leading up to this moment just turned out to be uh, some. It's a little something different than anticlimactic. It, it it is anticlimactic in a sense, but it's something else. But everything that they had hoped for was lost, basically, and just mm -hmm. so. I think. See, this is what I guess. I guess this is what men tend to do in relationships. Is like they are the problem solvers of the relationships but they have to figure out like okay is and if their uh their girlfriend or wife is in distress they have to figure out okay so is this a solutions conversation or is this just talk about feelings conversation i'm not exactly sure what loki was trying to do here perhaps if he took the solution approach to it he and he's very bad at this and he states it himself um, yes. That um, he perhaps, if I showed my love for her in this weird, incestuous sort of way, um, maybe this would solve uh, kind of some emotional tension or some solutions. I'm not sure exactly why they did this. It, I think it was really just for a fan's sake, just to say, like, to get, make make the point clear that it's not a joke. This is actually happening. But before Loki could actually spew out the words, um, Ravona killed Loki. No, no. 
<laughs> that was the second time where my jaw locked. Yes. And I couldn't get and my I was, uh, <laughs> Okay, so with Mobius's, it took me like a little bit to process it. With Loki's, I was just like, just say the words, Loki. Just say them. And then he goes, ah, and I was like, no. <laughs> Don't do this to me. <laughs> yep. Ravona had to be um, the one to do it to him. So yeah, uh, Loki gets pruned. Uh, and then um, Ravona's like, uh, what are you going to kill me? Because uh, Sylvie is able to knock her down, take the pruning stick and point it at her. Um, and Sylvie's like, no, I want you to tell me everything. Uh, and then it cuts to black and we get credits. Woo! And that is the end of Loki season one, episode four. Yes. And um, real quick. So in every, uh, in every episode up to this, um, the uh the end credit song has always been the 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 credit song has always been the same and it's been like the loki theme however for this episode they changed it up and i actually look so i looked up the song that was playing during this and it's it's a song called if you love me really love me and i was like hmm 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 Hmm." (laughs) carly if you love me you say (laughs) <laughs> I swear to God, if if <laughs> true love is like the whole thing for this show, and it's like that's what overcomes all, I'm going to just Disney. Nope, you are not. Oh no. <laughs> no, no, no. Or, no! Why did you have to make me think that? Now, is that how they're going to do it? No. <laughs> oh damn <man>. it! <laughs> I just, swear if that happens. Ah, love it happens. Love, no, I'm quitting. Love I'm overcomes all. Yay! Oh no. Oh, man. Anyways, <laughs> so yeah, we get credits, and we get our first end credit scene, y'all. Wait, Woo! there's a post credit scene. Shit! Yeah, man. I have to go back and watch it. Now. Oh shoot! <laughs> <laughs> yep, we get a post credit scene. In this post credit scene. So, back in episode one, um, I believe I mentioned this. Um, I said that there are one of two things that the pruning devices could do. And that was that the pruning device, the pruning sticks either delete you from existence and just kill you, or they teleport you to somewhere. And then I never brought that up again because the show seemed to lean heavily on the whole, like, it just delete like it just erases you from the timeline um because that's what the show seemed to be leading into until now we see low uh, uh, the credit scene starts with loki waking up in a desolate almost post-apocalyptic world we we and we see a mask is this hell uh, and if you, if you, so if you have this, I just found this as a little neat trick. If you have the subtitles on, they spell hell H E L, which is how hell is spelled in uh, Norse mythology. Oh, wow. Um, wow. Okay. Uh, because it's supposed to be Helheim. Like that's the full title, the full name. It's one of the nine realms. And that's um, where you go when you die and you're bad. Yeah. Um, basically. Wow. This is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we see him ask, "Am I am I in hell? Um, am I like uh, am I dead? Things like that." And then we hear a voice say, um, "You will be unless you come with us." And then we see three alternate versions of Loki from right to left. I'm going from right to left because that's the order I can see. I, I know things. Okay. Uh, but from right to left, we see classic Loki. Like comic book accurate Loki. In the middle, we have kid Loki. And then on the left, we have, um, as he's credited, boastful Loki. You forgot one. Uh, yeah, we also see Komodo Dragon Loki, which I just, I, I don't think that's supposed to be an actual version of Loki. I think that's just supposed to be kid Loki's pet. Okay. Um, hey, you never know. But yeah. Um, we don't also, because so like we don't image, know we like we don't know why all of them happen to be here. Yeah, which I'm sure we might get answers for in the next episode. But yeah, and also from looking at this image, um, we are 
uh, in a apocalyptic version of New York. Oh, okay. Um, the reason why is because if you look to the right of classic Loki, um, you can see the remains of what was Avengers Tower. Oh. But yeah, that was episode four. <laughs> what an no. episode. Basically, we got a whole bunch of what the fuck moments here, yep. there, and everywhere. Number one, Mobius dies. Number two, the timekeepers aren't real. Number three, Loki dies. Number four, Loki isn't actually dead, but now there are four other versions of him. Number five, Loki falling in love with himself created the multiverse uh, in the MCU. <laughs> it was a joke. God, oh God. damn I, it. I, I can't believe Marvel went there. Uh, oh my God. I don't, I, I don't know how I feel about it. Because, <laughs> I mean, on, on, on one hand, like, it's just, it's weird, right? Like, it's just super weird. On yeah. the other hand, lotion. Um, <laughs> on the what? Wait, what did you just say? On the other hand, lotion. Um, okay, who actually uses lotion? Okay, um, but yeah. Wow. Alrighty. So this is the importance of why we stress to you, audience, is that you watch the episodes yourself, become listening to our feedback on it, because you do not want to be spoiled in this prematurely uh, to everything that's happened here, because this is epic, gang. <laughs> this is epic material that we are covering, and you do not want to be spoiled about it. No. Definitely no. not. Okay, so... We've got two episodes left. Where exactly do you think the series will be going from this point, Brian? Honestly, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think the, the only thing that I can say right now is that uh, the next two episodes are probably just going to give us answers to unanswered questions that we have right now. Um, like, uh, for example, Sylvie's... Um, backstory like what like why was her nexus event so important like mm -hmm. what was it right um we're also going to probably get the complete answer of whether or not um the multiverse happened because they fell in love with each other um well actually okay so as of right now we know that loki likes sylvie but we don't know if sylvie likes loki we we at least know one half of that so i think uh they might answer the question of whether or not um, that actually did cause a full-on nexus point. Because um, in this episode, throughout the episode, they just call it a nexus event. Um, they never call it a nexus point. Oh, is there a difference between the two? Yeah, a nexus event is something that can be stopped. A nexus point is when it can no longer be stopped. Oh, okay. They always refer to it as an event and not a point, so that's still up in the air. Um, and then there's also the question of who created the timekeepers in the TVA. Yeah. Uh, whether or not that was Kang, we don't know. But you're you're just you're 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 hanging on. <laughs> I'm, hang, I'm hanging on with all. Yeah. We didn't get Mephisto, but maybe we can get Kang. <laughs> It's like um, you're you're hanging on to the ladder, and then right when uh, Sylvie quote killed the timekeepers that's when all the rungs broke on your ladder besides the last one and then you're still hanging on yeah <laughs> all righty well that um that's all i have about the ending do you have anything god damn okay so seeing as that we have only two episodes left um it could go either one of two directions it could go like you remember how Falcon and Winter Soldier started because basically that their episode four is kind of similar to this episode four in terms of the whole big stake, big actiony, um, uh, spoiler, um, you know, plot twist kind of things. It could, mm -hmm. and then the and then Falcon and Winter Soldier's episode five was basically just like it, it calmed down, it broke away mm -hmm. from the formula a bit just to calm itself down for a bit until before it got to the climax in episode six, it mm -hmm. could, it could go like that or Loki could, it could go the direction of trying to figure out everything else, how to get everyone situated into stuff like pre-planning 
before uh, the climax at the end, or it could do something like the climax. Like it could be a whole big action thing as well. In mm-hmm. terms of answering story, in, in terms of answering story questions, but then just reserve most of the action for the final part. Yeah, I have a feeling that episode five is probably going to be doing a lot of back and forth between Sylvie interrogating Ravona and what's going on in the uh, desolate world with the Lokis. Right. It's going to swap out between the two, most likely in the next episode. (laughs) They might meet at the end or they might meet at the beginning of episode six. Who knows? Yeah. We're going to structure our episode accordingly. (laughs) Yep. So, uh. Yeah, that will be that. So do you have anything else to say before we conclude today, Brian? Uh, no. All right. Do you? (laughs) No, I do not have anything else to say. So (laughs) with that said, uh, thank you for tuning in today. Uh, Make sure you go subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all of our Loki Season 1 reviews and synopsis podcasts. And also be sure to check out Loki streaming every Wednesday on Disney+. Plus. So with that said, uh, thank you guys for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic night and take care. Adios. Thanks for visiting the TVA. Don't hesitate to let us know how we're doing.